Before we get started, remember that texture is used by artists to show how something might feel, and also what it's made out of. The material that something is, is going to tell us the texture. For instance, glass is really smooth and slick. We know that, in contrast, a cactus is very sharp, and scales on a fish or on a reptile are really rough. So we're going to be making a texture hand. I've included this handout as a PDF in your folder, and I've printed it out so that we can see that I'm going to be using it to do my work today. The first step is to trace your non-dominant hand. So I am right-handed. I'm putting my left hand down, and I'm going to just trace around the hand. I want to keep my pencil straight up and down so I can really make sure that I get nice thick fingers. I also want to make sure that my fingers are spread apart. And I'm not going to trace my wrist. I'm going to draw the wrist in a minute. Once you have the basic hand shape, I'd like for you to look here and let's do some, some further drawing and details on the hand. I'm going to make the palm or the pad of the hand first. And then I'm going to draw the wrist. And I'm also going to draw some of these lines. We can look at our own hands if we'd like to. I kind of have to do this in reverse. And I'm just going to draw some of the lines lightly that I see. Looks like there's a line here. And just drawing some of these lines. Now I'm going to get started on the, the uh, textures. You are welcome to do what I'm about to do, which is to draw the texture that I see on this sheet, this handout for each finger. Um, burlap, rough stone, scales, a cactus, and then finally the, uh, the fur on the thumb. These textures are described on the handout. So for instance, it says to create fur, use a series of short lines wrapped around the shape. So I'm going to go through each of these textures. I'll do this in, in, a, in a speeded up way um, that we're used to where I advance the video very quickly. Um, and I'll stop from time to time to just talk to you about what I'm doing. I'm going to start with the pinky and work left to right. The burlap, it says, is created with pattern of crossed lines. We know that's cross hatching with a few darker spots and pieces of thread. As I look at the cross hatching here, I'm noticing that the vertical lines that would run from the tip of the finger to the base of the finger are pretty wiggly. And then I'm noticing that the cross hatch marks are curved to show that curved part of the finger. The last thing I'm going to do is add some little pieces of the thread. So burlap is like a rough fabric and I'm going to add some little lines, just some, some uh, lines sticking out on the sides and then a few kind of in the, in the center. Moving on to the rough stone, with the last finger, I just went ahead and traced that line a little darker. I'm going to do that before I start drawing the rough stone. I want to make sure that I kind of divide 
this finger and I'm going to subdivide or divide the fingers into each part as I'm going along. So for the stone, it says, for a rough stone texture, first draw the stones, then shade each one with lines. And we know that that would be hatching lines. When I look at the handout in this example, I'm noticing that the top of each of the stones is lighter. And it looks like the shading is a little heavier on the left side of the stone and gets a little bit lighter, fewer lines, shorter lines toward the right side of the stone. Also, I'm noticing that the stones kind of fit together in a pattern that's almost like a uppercase I. So the first two stones, and I'm going to use this example, the first two stones are going to be at the top and they're kind of curved. And now I'm going to put, and I think I want to actually move this line closer to the center of the finger. Now I'm going to start that kind of uppercased I. And again, I'm going to curve these lines a touch and the stones are not all going to be exactly the same. They're a little irregular. And I'm going to start with this eye pattern all the way from the top of the finger to the bottom. Now I'm going to fill in the other stones. Now that I have the basic shape of each, I'm going to go ahead and do the hatching shading. I'm going to get a little heavier on the left side of each stone and lighten up as I get toward the middle. As I look at the left side of the finger, I even no notice some cross hatching coming up diagonally. And I think I'll add that as well. The last thing I did was really to darken these joints where the two stones come together, where the stones meet. And I think that that helps to add a little contrast and to make these stones more visible. The next one is the scales and it says to first draw a line of U's at the top and then add another and then we continue to add as we go down. Again, I'm going to make these lines curve a little bit to show that the finger is rounded. I don't want to draw them straight across and I don't want to curve them um, like down this way. So each row of U's will be kind of curved to follow the contour of the finger. Before I get started with that, I am going to darken this line carefully. I'm going to make a light line here where this is going to be subdivided this finger from the others and now I'm going to do the scales.
the next finger is the cactus. When I look at the cactus, it says first draw the long spine lines from the top, the tip of the finger to the bottom or the base. Then add the needles. Finish with a little shading along one side. I'm going to keep that shading on the left side. I also notice over here on the scales that there are a few diagonal lines to just add a little bit of shading on this side of the scales. So I can add that too. And that just helps to continue with our continuity of shading. And referring back to our shading practice from the beginning of the year with hatching and cross hatching. So I'm noticing with similar to with the burlap, the lines on the cactus are not really uh, nice straight lines. They're wiggly. They're a little bit closer together on the left and right side of the cactus. So first I'll darken the outline of the finger and I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around the thumb while I'm here. And I'm going to start with the vertical lines and then add the spines. The last texture will be the fur for the, um, the thumb. And it says to create fur, use a series of short lines wrapped around the shape. So I want those lines to start in this direction, then start to go more toward the base and finally go diagonally away from the thumb. The last thing I'll do is I'm gonna just try to make this fun crack in the earth and, uh, and then I'll be finished up. If you would like to add color to your hand, please do that. If you have time and you want to use color pencils, I think that that might be a really fun way to, to finish up. I'm going to finish making some hatch marks, shading a little bit darker underneath, like I noticed the, the sheet has, and just add some of the shading to the hand. And again, this is a really good chance for us to practice our hatching and cross hatching on a form that is an organic form, not a uh, geometric form like our cubes and spheres and cones that we, we started shading at the beginning of the year. I hope you enjoy practicing drawing textures. Again, add color if you'd like to, and I look forward to seeing your work.